Hey guys. <clears throat> Let's see if my uh... can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Sounds good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, marketing. So, can I start by saying, um, just met with my marketing mentor guy. Uh, so that I want to just run this by you for a context of kind of how we want to think about it. But um, I mentioned a little bit. Let me close this here. Um, about yeah, you guys are ready. You guys ready to, for this? Because you gotta be ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, no, this is actually pretty interesting. So the the concept of extreme enterprise. The thing that we're solving for with open source is that open source products, there are some, there's few, there's, you know, there's things like RepRap, there's FarmBot, there's a really state-of-art open source electronic motor controller, there's Arduinos, there's a few things out there, but a lot of them take a long time and nobody's shown a replicable method where you can create enterprise. So the idea is to go into a weekend event where you create an enterprise. Yay! Thousand people. How about a thousand people or a hundred people? Can we handle that? Can we address Brooks' law? Brooks' law is that the more people you throw at a project, the later it becomes. Right? <laughs> um, we have to address that, and I think we can. I think with modular breakdown, I think with what software has shown, with the kind of uh, modular workflows for extreme manufacturing that we've shown, where we can build a brick press in a single day or a tractor. Uh, there are ways to break things down and design for parallel build. So we can design a more ambitious package of including enterprise, including marketing, distribution, and everything else in that. So uh, the thought that uh, Steve had was, okay, in order to attract people to participate in this, one easy hanging fruit is instead of relying on the ethical nature of people, we can rely on we actually get like a purchase order, so basically like a pre-sale, like what Kickstarter does. Kickstarter is kind of like a pre-sale thing. But say we're working on an electric motor and we, we contact a company that wants to buy a thousand of them. And in this extreme enterprise event, we develop it by attracting, like once again, the problems we we're solving for is people showing up and doing the work. Yeah. But I think we can do that. Uh, we can have a lot of people show up and develop this product and have a market that's actually already there. Uh, which would be something to think about. Uh, how does that relate to all our work here? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's 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 similar that we're we're still trying to to solve for how do we get the message out and how do we recruit people. So we're talking about Facebook and and podcasts and other things, but. Um, the thing that we definitely have to do is to like whichever method we do like say with this extreme enterprise method we have to reach out to a lot of people and f know where they are and so forth um, so as we get into what we're talking today I want to give a, one example of a really good collaborating partner it's called Insight Focus um, we worked with a guy they actually collaborated with us they produced one of our early CB controllers but I want to show you the website for what they do. So they're a fab lab, a, a Google Insight Focus. They're a fab lab. They develop, they're explicitly talking about collaboration and economic development for their community. Uh, they're open source, they're collaborative. Uh, really good example of type of organization that we want to be working with as a partnership. Um, I communicated with, with, with a guy that's Blair Evans before. I lost touch with him, but that's a great example just, just to uh, give a good example of what's out there for the kind of organization that embodies entrepreneurship, open source, collaborative, um, you know, relevant technology. They're working on like micro house, micro houses for like uh, vets or poor people and stuff. Um, interesting. Okay, but maybe without hijacking this meeting, let's uh, have Andreas uh, lead it. All right, so um, first point is to, to look at what you today's agenda and, uh, and agree on the contents. So uh, let's add some marketing information. So uh, yeah, just trying to get some structure into the meeting so that we don't yeah. end up talking about 
uh, our things, yep. except the things we agree on. So um, this is just a suggestion. If anyone wants to change anything, then, then please say so. Um, and the first part is to go through the agenda first, and second part is that that's kind of the main activity is to go through all of the different parts from that I took out from uh, uh, one eighty degree consulting. Prioritize which ones should we do first, and which can we get the best uh, outcome from, um, and then assign responsibilities, and, and in the end, put it as much as we have time, put it into to a schedule. Uh, so we can use that on for reference uh, later on. Um, but that's the most important part is to prioritize and, and basically have a good blueprint for our marketing. Um, and I don't know if we have other things we want to discuss if we have any time over, then we can do that towards the end. Yeah, no, that's prioritizing uh, activity sounds like a great deal. Josh and Joe, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, so um, let's start with prioritizing. So, um, and Josh, I will rely on your expertise quite a bit here. Um, so as I said, you had it in three phases, but um, as if we're going to use it for the steam camp that we have already in September, then maybe we need to do some of the later phase tasks earlier on, I assume. Uh, for example, partnerships, we're already starting with partnerships uh, a little bit. So. Yeah, so let's prioritize what's most important for the marketing. First, overall, and then we can discuss the subtasks later on. Um, we discussed this a little bit last time. I think, so, uh, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Organic social media, podcast guest appearances, and starting to build the relationships we need for partnerships are all zero cost and can be worked on right away. There's no there's no barrier to working on those, no budget that needs to be allocated to them right now. So I would think just from an ease of making quick progress, low hanging fruit sort of perspective, that's a that's the first spot to attack. Okay. Um, which one do you say is that CEO and yes. in organic media? Podcast yes, and or organic, right? Podcasts, organic, and uh, yeah, relationship building towards those partnerships. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Josh, um, did you uh, get a chance to look any into the, the podcast list? Yeah, I, uh, I made, made a Google, Google spreadsheet of the pod, uh, like a way I was kind of tracking the podcast. Awesome. I'll send it, I just sent it in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I was able to look up some podcasts and just kind of look into it. And then like, let me know what you think of oh, like, yeah. the the columns here and just like the way of tracking it yeah um l let me add to the columns so so um i think i have uh yeah i i made some notes on how do we vet like what are our criteria for how we select things um so let's take a look at this Okay, uh, let me give you a link here. Prioritization strategy. Background research. Um, take a look at this link. I was working on this from, from the extreme enterprise viewpoint, but that's just. I mean, our audiences are always got to be prioritized, but that's um, this. This is relevant here. Maybe I can talk about that for a second. So, in order for the greatest fit, and I, 
and I put Insight Focus as a good example, but let's look at the, the under the background research point three, prioritize contributions on their score transparently. So what are all those things? So open culture, uh, super cooperators who see the value in working with others. If, if we approach a podcaster and uh, they're collaborative, we have an easier way in. Um, alignment with OSC work specifically. If they, they work on the things we do, obviously they will um, have a point of con uh, conversation like say a 3D printing thing or someone who's working on the seed eco home or whatever, whatever topics we take. Mm -hmm. uh, very, if it's relevant, yeah, great. And that's not only on technology level, but also on the concept of, okay, how do we develop open business models or open collaboration protocols? Okay. Uh, point three is willingness to share economically significant information. Now, I'm not sure how much it applies to podcasts unless they're technical podcasts where the guy there is actually aiming to develop some open technology. Um, we want to vet them. What, do, what does this vetting for openness mean? Like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but they have to be open to the idea that... Um, oh, yeah, let me give you one example for how you can tell this. Um, the open so let me sh show you an example of the open source bike project, how they position themselves on our website. Um, what is that open source bike project from Argentina? Um, bike... Do you guys know? No. There's, uh, uh, where is it? I just wrote this on my log somewhere. So, um, they have a website where they, let's see, Google open source bike from Argentina. No, let me go into my email. Argentina. They had the best example of what I saw as far as copy on their website, which shows that, hey, these guys are really open to Rodin. Okay. Um, take a look at this in a chat box. Look what they write there. Um, they have um, mm. they have a piece of writing that says explicitly, "Hey, um, work with us. We want to create open bicycle enterprises." That's like, uh, uh, let's see which page has that. Oh, wait, maybe it's on the open source page. Ah, wait. No. Oh, here. Yep. <clears throat> Let me paste that in. So look at what they say about open source. Uh, let's see. Did I do that? Oh, yeah. Slash open source. Yeah, yeah. It's right there, what I already typed in. Um, they're literally inviting you to start a company together. This is cool. Like, this is what we need. CC by SA is the license, so we got to be familiar that CC by SA, like other open licenses, NC does not work, non-commercial does not work. That's not open source. So that's, uh, Josh, if you're looking at that, NC <clears throat> does not work. Um, so that's an example of a company willing to share economically significant information openly. That's great. Next, uh, availability, like for a collaborator, are they available, like, like for the podcast that we're searching, are they kind of like a run-of-the-mill podcast or do they want to actually get involved with you and, and collaborate on a friendly level? Uh, do they have time or it's like they're just doing it kind of like pressed for time? Level of technical expertise. Um, you can pick out like if they actually got good technical design, it's someone we want to work with. Entrepreneurial skill. Um, do they have entrepreneurial content? Because you kind of, kind of, got to be entrepreneurial in some way to, to get in, to have a better relationship in terms of collaboration. Because this is about making things, creating things from scratch. Um, I, I, I call it actually self-esteem leading to vulnerability, leading to working openly. So that kind of a property in person is kind of subjective. But, but people with high self-esteem don't have a problem with 
being vulnerable and helping others and, and like collaborating really openly. I find that people who um, are really insecure, they, they can't work with you because they're like afraid about everything. <laughs> um, especially sharing anything that's <clears throat> economically significant. Um, okay. Connectedness. So if you're looking for a podcast, do they appear to be connected to others in the community, industry transformers mm -hmm. and other leaders in the community? Like that's, that would be a great thing. Revenue model. Um, do they have any revenue models that they're actually proposing that we can collaborate on or, or is it like, oh yeah, we're going to make a better world and uh, Jesus is going to provide for all of us. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, are they willing teachers? Are they open to teaching people, sharing knowledge through public writing? Like you can see like if somebody has a blog and teaches about their stuff, that's really cool. If they're like promoting themselves as, as experts, but they don't really share any tech, real technical information outside of just plain inspirational stuff. Um, to give you a, a good example, I would actually say Living Machines is an example of a very closed thing that's very inspirational. Uh, so if you Google Living Machines by John Todd, it's like, wow, this is the most amazing thing. If you try to look at any of the technical detail of execution, very limited. You might have some scientific knowledge, a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as far as any execution, it's highly proprietary technology. So we want to look for things that are um, willing, willing teachers, people who are willing to teach. That's kind of related to the open source aspect. Teaching experience, um, it's kind of, uh, we want teachers, that's the general comment for if we look at podcasts. Focus, um, do they have long-term goals or are they, are they all over the place? Mm -hmm. um, you know, being focused is good, being broad-minded is also good, but there has to be some kind of an organization there. Uh, I, I would actually say like um, another very visionary project is One Community. One Community Global, they're designing like these open source uh, healing centers. Uh, very far, far fetched, but I think there's a very deliberate and long term path there. So I wouldn't call it uh, hippie like, it would be, it's quite organized. I think Jay does a good <laughs> job in organizing it towards a very certain direction. Um, focus. Do they measure their outcomes? Are there any measurable goals that they have? Do they track their work? Uh, how do we track our work? I don't know. We track by numbers of prototypes built and numbers of enterprises started, um, which is zero, perhaps, or one or two <laughs> so far. Um, but enterprise and livelihood creation is our, our metric, I would say. Uh, willingness to transcend and include. So when we look for collaborators, are they actually willing to take on a bigger collaboration with others, or do they feel so tight and pressured for their time that, oh, yeah, I can only look at this much? Because the kind of culture we want is people who say, oh yeah, we can actually open up to another organization because we can do mo more together and we have to work less to get there. So that's my rant on um, prioritization of different activities. But in summary, it's super cooperators, open source, entrepreneurial teachers, mm -hmm. uh, visionary kind of like economic development type thing. And there could be a lot of lot of different organizations do we want to go through a little bit on the actual list like some comments on those people like nature am i that's a good sounds really good software engineering daily um maybe uh i'll, I'll ask you josh if you could put those five main columns like like entrepreneurial open source uh the five things i mentioned you think you can add that to that mm -hmm. So we can grade yeah, it I'll by. Add the, to the here. Yeah, no, that's you got a lot of col wow, you got a lot of columns there already. That's good. Um, so I'm gonna just write that down real, <clears throat> real quick. Entrepreneurial, super cooperator, uh, open source teacher. Builder, like the like, builder, uh, creating a reality as opposed to consumer. Uh, how do we say that? A maker, maker versus consumer culture. Like Insight Focus talks a lot about, hey, we can build our communities, we can build the enterprises in them, 
everywhere. Um, five-legged dog. That's the five-legged dog there. Uh huh. Okay, I'm done on that. So prioritization, uh, Andreas, where we go? <clears throat> yeah, right. So um, okay, so quite a lot there. So uh, when we do the various things, um, I think it's a good idea to have to create one wiki page for each thing, and then we can, if necessary, transcode it into the one marketing page. Um, I'm adding like feel free to add things everywhere. For example, I added a partnership. So lots of top task of that would be the podcasts. So I added the prioritization you talked about. Uh, that's quite general, so so everyone can, can look on that file. Uh, and then the tracker, which uh, you, Josh, have already made. Uh, so, well, I guess we can assign that one already. So it's Josh, the um, one who is responsible for, for the podcasts then. Um, Josh, are you? Yeah, is that what we we're? Uh, that was what we were discussing right yep. over the week. Yep. Yeah. Right. And he he told me he has um, until end of August to work on this, and he can contribute like fifteen up to twenty hours a week on that. Uh, so that's mm, the available resource on that. And um, would you spend all that time? How much time does podcasts uh, need per week? Um, I think it just kind of we get it kind of has to be read as we get go, you know. Because uh, I don't know what I collected here yesterday without like the five columns we just added. It took me like an hour and a half, so I can like put a lot more work into this as well as other places you may need me. All right, so let's let's uh, let's um start and see what's yeah. So I would um, say let's go through like organic. All right. Milestones, mm -hmm. like, do we talk about a number for the, the podcasts? Is there a number? Get on 100 podcasts over six months? That's a lot, is it? That's like a... No, I mean, realistically speaking, how many, what should we shoot for? Uh, how many guest appearances do you want to do a week? Like, one a week or two or three yeah. appearances a week? Or? Three, three a week. Three a week over it. six months? Six times uh, twenty-four times. That's three. almost seventy-five. Seventy-five. Let's do it. Seventy-five in six months. Yeah. Does that sound right? Uh, let me just. Too low, too me. high. Well, I mean, the the work there is going to be actually engaging with the people and organizing all those. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time, right? So, but maybe we sh we should. I mean, how about we put on a calendar that we put six months of podcasts on and and plan it out for until then? Yeah, I mean, it's a good goal to uh, shoot for. And there's, there's no, no like, like monetary cost going, going into like getting, getting all these guest appearances. appearances. It's just kind of time that we can all put in. Yeah, but we could shoot counts to the time as well, um, yeah. both time and uh, dollars. So um, six months instead. We're going to aim for a free per week, and we'll see if it's as we go along. Um, I think that's going to be more of a momentum thing to chase, too. You know, a goal, a goal, a way to lay out that goal might be, let's aim to have one week all through July, increase it to two a week all through August, and try to build it up. Because as we can get, as we can get on to more podcasts, other podcasts are going to hear about us, and we may start get pulling down a lot of organic interest that way, and find an easier time building those relationships initially. Yeah. Josh, if uh, the the outreach and uh, if the outreach and correspondence part of that whole thing, I mean, it can help with the research too. But you've already got a good start on that. But reaching out to people and asking them for stuff is kind of kind of my whole thing. So if that's yeah. something you and I can collaborate on, I'm I'm there. Yeah, that sounds good because uh, I don't know how much of the actual reaching out you guys would actually want me to do, but I'm more than willing to just work with Joe and just like. Give him all my research, and then he can be the one to like coordinate and just like talk to the podcast host. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe, would you be comfortable doing that? So, so uh, if if Josh provides you the lists, 
So maybe um, if we do that this week, maybe next week we can say, okay, let's prioritize, or like throughout the week, like a, you already have a bunch of them, but do that a little more and let's just, like what I could do is perhaps rate them or we can all rate them, like which ones mm -hmm. sound the best. And then we just go for the highest priority ones. That'd be great. Should there be a, should we set a goal? Like we have a goal in terms of success and being on three podcasts a week. Should we set a goal in like how many podcasts to reach out to a week? That could lead to higher success in getting actually on the podcast. Joe, what do you think the numbers there look like? <clears throat> how many outreach, how many success rate? Success rate's going to be really hard to Jessica, really hard to judge and set goals. I'm sorry. Uh, no, sorry. Go ahead, uh, Joe. Uh, success rate's going to be really hard to know until we get out there and start start feeling it out. I can have that whole list contacted by the the list as it is right now. I can get this. I can get this list. I can get this list contacted by Friday and start feeling it out. You know, what I'll probably do is write up an introductory email. Um, and in fact, if you if you like, what I could do is write an introductory email for the kind of format and pitch I'm looking to make and put it out to the rest of you guys so you can take a look at it and see if you like the way, you yeah. know, the language and everything. I'm still getting used to this culture, so I want to represent the organization properly. Yep. Um, but I can start kind of drafting like some sort of, a, call it a sample pitch email for everybody on that list and have that turned around to you guys by Thursday, Friday at the latest. That'd be great. Um, let's do that. What What do we have for existing copy of, of like outreach emails? Was that to Josh or? No, that was to you. Um, we have some uh, saves that um, some other collaborator wrote earlier. I have some outreach to instructors not to, um, it, it can be used as well. Um, can you can feed that in over. to Joe? <clears throat> yeah. That'd be great. It'd um, also be good if there is an email address I could get access to so that whatever yeah. I send to folks is coming from OSC. Okay. Set you up to Joe at opensourceecology.org. Would that work? That's exciting. <laughs> nice. Actually, we should get you, get that, uh, Josh. Unless you're not gonna, if you're not, if you're just gonna be researching, you don't really need that. Do you want to be contacting people too, or do you want an OSC email? Or uh, I'm willing to do anything. It's kind of on Joe if he needs help. Like, because if we're trying to get three a week, we're gonna have to be reaching out to definitely more than like 20, 25 a week. At least I would say so. Okay, so let's set you both up. I think, yeah. yeah, I think initially just we can hit that hard and then evaluate how many people are actually taking and what kind of time lags there are for getting on po podcasts. You know, Josh, too, if you want to make it a convention right at the start that you and I are CCing each other on our emails like that, too, mm -hmm. that way we can kind of watch each other. You know, hey, I've noticed you're working with this, and this guy is saying this. Maybe this would help, and that kind of thing. You and I can kind yeah. of... Please CC me on there, too, so I can feedback on culture, like cultural points, how we got to sure. present stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, one of the Excel spreadsheets that I sent you earlier today contains some of the emails that I sent for to the instructors, um, so that should be able to be repurposed as well. Okay, great. Um, and then I will find what's in the wiki as well. Um, all right. So let's quickly mention. So we have partnerships, organic social media, SEO, um, as well. And where does Google AdWords enter? Is it, it's, it's not After part of After we get the system. SEO. So um, yeah, let's include it in, in this one. Um, I mean, this one will, will help us also um, in a broader way because it will increase our digital footprint as well. So partnerships, and Joe, you're already working a little bit and calling up different organizations. 
I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling some things out. What I've been working on right now is getting in better touch with the uh, uh, Arizona Sustainability Alliance. One of the things they do a lot of is taking groups of college students out to small farming startups. They work with some of the refugee organizations for refugees who are coming to our area to do agriculture. And these students volunteer on the farm, learn about sustainable agriculture practices and get course credit for it. And the people running the farms, of course, get help starting up. So I'm trying to feel out and through that organization because they do a lot of partnership work partnership work with entrepreneurs. Um, I've managed to arrange a sort of gathering at one of the community gardens I've been trying to build up here in Phoenix this Friday. I want to talk with their members and say, hey, you know, this is the project that I'm working on right now. This is one of the things I'm doing. This is who we are and what we do. Do you see, uh, do you see places where we might be able to partner up where this organization and your organization could, could get along together? And as I kind of uh, investigate that, I'm hoping that provides me with sort of a working model to start looking for other organizations like Arizona Sustainability Alliance to start drumming up that networking, that networking push. But I need, I need, uh, I need a little bit of data so that I know how to approach them, what kinds of people I need to be talking to. I need to kind of create a strategy for making inroads with those kinds of organizations. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. Do you think you would be able to use the Excel file? So you, you talked about using in CRM as well. So do you have yeah. any thoughts regarding that? I uh, I looked at the 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 files you sent me this morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig back into that this afternoon and see if uh, what I'm working on maps on but well. And then I'll uh, I'll let you know if there's any particular kind of tools or things that I need for that for that to be to be helpful. The primary the primary function that I am in for CRM is being able to make notes on, call it a virtual account. You know, if I reach out to Arizona Sustainability Alliance and get in touch with somebody who works for the part of their organization concerned with technology, I want to be able to write out a note, you know, uh, John Smith is the technical expert for this and works with engineering students from Arizona State University. Um, reached out to John, got a positive response, but no commitment yet, and things like that, so that I can track my own progress as I make my inroads into these kinds of organizations. Yeah, okay. I think in that case, I uh, let's see, the one which is a little bit more messy contains probably more of that in that case, and then we can copy it and modify it to have the type of things that you need to track. Um, what, so what software are you talking about, Andreas? Um, all right, so let's move over here. So when it comes to recruiting instructors, I made a clean Excel tracker. So you can fill in, like, should contact, contact, you're interested, not interested, meeting one, send proposal, meeting two, proposal, accept, and, and such. Uh, and then one more messy one, which ended up being the one that I used as well, um, where you can basically fill in whatever you think is necessary and then update your status as you go about. Um, you can also have, if you have certain comments and such. So this is what I used just for myself. So it's not like a public document, especially since it's SPI, so you can only access, this, access it if I invite you for, for this document. But it can be quite useful for things which uh, Joe mentioned, for example, interest from the candidate side. So if someone is very interested, or passionate about it, then that's something which, which I would definitely want to pursue. Uh, so it can, can be quite nice information uh, to track and keep. Yeah, track of. Um, and then there's quite a lot of plugins. I don't know if you have any of these plugins, Joe, but there's quite a lot of good ones for uh, which collect information from different social accounts. So if you find them, for example, on LinkedIn, it will automatically send you information for their Facebook, GitHub, uh, and you can see a percentage of, of different things. Um, so yeah, that's that's it, basically. Um, excellent, excellent, that's pretty nice. We have this identity integration tools still, or is it something which might help too? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'll I can get in there and start 
putting what I what I'm working on into that document. And if I come up against something that is really limited or some sort of functionality that I really need, I can just reach out to you and we could talk about what it would take to, to build that into there too. Right. Awesome. It's definitely more than enough to get started there. Great. All right. Um, so can I put you, Joe, as responsible for partnerships? Absolutely. Great. And if anyone else wants to go in. And how much time do you plan on spending for this on a weekly basis? Initially, three to five hours a week. That'll certainly require more as it heats up, but for just setting out the initial feelers and researching who I'm reaching out to, that should be plenty. Yeah. Let's see. There are some automatic plugins as well. I'm just kind of making up to myself. Okay, great. Um, organic social media. So, Josh, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is Facebook, LinkedIn. No, that's inorganic. Oh yeah, it's also Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. It's basically our, the posts which Marching are writing right now on Facebook, right? Yeah, they can all pretty much be like, cycled through those platforms uh on the uh the final report there's kind of like specifics on each platform and kind of like the best practices for each one mm. like i know linkedin has like a slide share that's really popular so they'll directly share like slides that we're making straight to linkedin so that could be a nice mm. thing to start adding but yeah i think it's just like kind of ramping up engagement on all of those platforms could we have like a miniature best practice for each platform? Just a wiki page with like for LinkedIn is good to use the slides, for example, on Instagram. Is it best to use stories or is it best to use pictures? Um, things like that. Um, is that something, asking, yeah, is that something you you think you can help with? Yeah, I could look into like the like look into more of best practices on each page. Right. So hooking up with organic social media. I'm watching you're already doing quite a bit on Facebook, right? Do you post anything on Instagram and LinkedIn as well? No, I haven't been really doing Instagram and uh, for Instagram I mean we could be taking a lot of the videos or no the material we have in our Google Drives and OSC media assets, which are all over the place. There, I mean, the high resolution GVCS media has links to just about all our repos of pictures and everything else. Someone could be working that. Uh, LinkedIn, so somebody wants to, someone would have to take over my account or the OSC account or get plugged in there. Um, um, if, if I get like content, I can share it on my link. Um, um, like you, are you saying to to do it on an OSC page, OSC LinkedIn, which is? And if that was what you were referring to, because in that case I can basically copy what you make. But maybe it's not good to. It's not the same type of content, I guess. Uh, Josh, is it a bad idea to? Is it bad idea to have this more personal content on LinkedIn uh, um, that we do on on Facebook? No, I think honestly, just any content is great on both platforms. Uh, we did see in our research that frequent posting on LinkedIn is the best way to grow your page. So they're saying at least one mm -hmm. post a day. And then I was telling Larson about it, like the 411 rule, about how it doesn't necessarily have to be like an OSC written post, but it could even just be like a repost about from another open source uh, organization. So. Yeah shouldn't be too hard to uh, to run and then yeah you shouldn't feel like reluctant to share anything because any content is good that's in a final report had the 411 rule too right yeah that should be the final report yeah read the report 
go through. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in that report, actually. So, uh, um, if we get strategic too and start sharing yeah. content from the organizations we're trying to partnership or partner with, and sharing the social media posts from the podcasts we're trying to get guest appearances on too, that does a lot to build our credibility. That a lot of that can can there's a lot of synergy between those different projects. Um, is it good to use something like Hootsuite? Hootsuite, where you can post. So then you write one post and you can post it to different medias at the same time. Or do we need to change it a little bit for the different medias? Because in that case, marching when when you post, you would be able to just post it. Uh, Jessica, if you're talking, uh, I can't hear you. I was just saying, I think you should change it. I think there are different kinds of posts. I mean, that's partly why the, the different platforms have been slightly different. But I, the point, uh, Josh, is it Josh? Uh, sorry, just everybody made about um, so, like LinkedIn being about just mention. I think that's a really interesting concept. I feel like through the public lab um, and the whole Gauche community, we should be able to link into a ton of comments. I haven't really paid that much attention. Uh, about yeah. that part. I, I don't like social media much either. I'm, kind of, I'm really excited to be hearing this actually because I'm like, great, just how to use it appropriately. Cause, man, it makes me crazy. But um, so yeah, I do think that the, the content's a bit different and I'm not great at Instagram, but I do have a pretty good graphic guy. So I'd be, I'd be willing to start trying to do the OSC Instagram off of what you were talking about. Not saying I can do it forever, but I'd be willing to start at, part at least to learn for myself as well, yeah. if that's helpful. Um, Maybe yeah, uh, we'll check this out. Like uh, for us who are working on marketing, there's a page called OSC Feeds on um, on a on a wiki. So let me. Hey, where to go? There, here, take a look at this OSC Feeds. I I put that page up there because those are things that if we ever go on one of those sites, there should always be relevant material that we can comment on or share well, I mean yeah. one is very interesting content from them or like us feeding back oh yeah we, we're just working on a gear down for the shredder right now check it out uh, that's a good thing but for that we need to fin finish fleshing out that page like I would like to see like this is our top 100 places or feeds that we go to and, and if we just go through that so we go through there one day we can comment or engage somewhere and it could be meaningful, okay. quite meaningful, because it's, there's always really cool info up on all these venues. Okay, great. That's yeah, that makes sense. Then those are essentially people that you feel like there's already a merging of ideas, and you want to connect with. I think that's totally the right approach. Yeah. Yeah, that's those great. should be people. Those should be people we want to be talking to all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, SEO and Google AdWords. Or, so Instagram, how can we do it actually the most easiest? If, if we have Martian who creates content, will you mail it out to everyone? Or how can we be notified if, for example, Jessica uh, posts it on have to Instagram? Have account, right? You'd have to be friends on an account, <laughs> I think. I don't have an Instagram account actually now, but isn't that how it is? Like you follow each other? <laughs> Yeah, I think you need to have an account. Um, I'm thinking how, for example, if you mentioned that you want to do a bit of Instagram things, how you can help with the Instagram account if you do it from your own account or if you do it from... Because you can, we can connect for the business yeah, planner. Yeah, so uh, we need to get the business. If, if that one is not activated yet, Martian, then we need to activate the business manager from Facebook. And that one, you can give access to Instagram and to Facebook, to who can do what, who can advertise, who can put out posts. Um, and then, for example, you can put the posting rights, post rights uh, for Instagram to Jessica, and she will be able to post pictures for you. Uh, OK, so for Instagram, you want me to share that with Jessica? Yes. OK. I can't believe I took that job. I was like, really? Am I going to say I'll do that? <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm excited. Eric <laughs> said he would 
possibly like like uh, Andreas maybe follow up with art because he said he would cut down some videos and do some graphics. Mm -hmm. He says he claims he's good at it. So yeah, uh, yeah. So Who for YouTube, let's check with Eric. He said that uh, on Slack that he will be out of business for a few weeks. So we'll see. Uh, okay. Quick some. But I write it down. Oh, maybe maybe not. But, um, yeah. We'll see. But you said, I mean, you said there are places already off of the wiki, off of the website to look specifically for image content? Yeah, it's called High Resolution GBCS Media. Okay. That makes Where else? perfect sense. Right. That's what it's called. <laughs> I'll basically copy what uh, Martin writes. And uh, Martin, if you can give me access to LinkedIn. Okay, I'm writing that note down. So access to LinkedIn for... So give the OSC emails to Joe and Josh. Writing it down here as well. And uh, okay. And I shared my calendar with. Um, I should share it with with Joe too. The podcast. I just created a calendar called Podcast Calendar, so we can start putting stuff on. The guy from Nature MI would like to do it on on July third. Cool. So we've got our first one. Yeah. Already. And we you haven't had even started. One. You had that other one, that Buddha one. But you, that, and you even have people following you on Facebook from it. Remember? Yeah. That kid was like, I'm so ready to be involved. Yeah. You already have one. Link up with those guys. Off of what's, uh, there's a few that you should be on, actually. Pass them on to, to the podcast team. You know, once you guys have the list, I'll just see if there's, I'm like, oh, there's still on there. Yeah. yeah. Joe right. Rogan, obviously. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to have to grow. Like, <laughs> I think after our first successful, like, enterprise uh, extreme enterprise event will go on Joe Rogan. Um, or if you take some mushroom at the same time, then you can watch I mean, even sooner. That guy's kind of, yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> um, okay, all right, next. so let's just try to, to get to the last one now. So SEO and Google AdWords. Any people curious about these two? <laughs> Once Very. <we> try them. <laughs> Very. Um, yeah, Josh, what, what do you think like about the SEO stuff? Like, is there, um, so there's a bunch of recommendations in, in the final report. What, what can we do like right now? That's low hanging fruit there. Yeah, I was talking to Chapman about SEOs the other day. And uh, I think the discussion came up last Friday as well. Like, do you want to implement SEO after you kind of have an established online presence or while you're establishing that online presence with like oh, the yeah. podcast and the organic? So it's like, when do you want to necessarily start spending that that $10,000 you have toward SEO? Uh, you could either do it, I'd say, like down the line, probably like end of summer, once you have like a summer worth of social media and partnerships starting to be established in podcasts. Or do you want to do it now while those things are building up? Right, but SEO um, means um, like getting all the, like the, all the improvements, not the AdWords. Yeah. So SEO would be things like yeah, taglines on pictures and, and the headlines, make sure that all the words are the same in the web page. Um, getting backlinks from other web pages as well, uh, big web pages, uh, so that Google, the Google engine will prioritize us quite. Uh, things like that. Um, I'm quite curious about that one uh, as well. So, if anyone else is, then feel free to join. But I'll add myself as well. If anyone else is curious on, or wants to contribute to the SEO and Google AdWords? What do we need to do to to set people up to that? Like, basically, you need like the access to the like WordPress backend and stuff like that? It depends. Yeah, it's different for, 
for Google AdWords and for SEO for it would be for WordPress to be able to edit the pages there. Um, but when it comes to backlinks, then anyone can do that. That would be more for reaching out. And then we can perhaps include a strategy in the outreach program to, to Joe that if the web pages that he or partners that he meets with have any link repository or something like that, uh, whether they link to, to business partners or they link to uh, similar organizations, if they can add a link to our organization as well, because then we will have a larger digital footprint and we get better ratings. Uh, oh, yeah. So it will, it's basically those two parts. Our own web page, making sure that we have this similar keywords everywhere, good meta tags, and uh, then a strategy for our partners. Let's make add that as a separate task. Uh, but perhaps I can write something down and check with Joe if this is something which can be part of of the email. It can be, for example, if if they say no, then we can follow up with a okay, uh, we understand your situation, but perhaps you can link to our web page or something like that. Uh, when it's applicable, it will not always be applicable. And Google AdWords. I don't have so much experience of Google AdWords, so that will be a test and try. Um, I think one of the instructors from the January event has some. Oh, actually, I worked with Google AdWords once. Uh, no, no, no. I forgot my everything about it. I think one of the instructors uh, knows the analytics part of it, but that's not the same thing as the the AdWords part of it. Um, and I'm personal. I think the most effective ones are Facebook. I know we're a little bit against Facebook Pixel, so we don't use those ones. Um, but they're definitely effective because we can capture data, feed it back to the Facebook account. But that we can be for later or not at all if they are perceived as being too evil. Um, uh, Pixel requires what? That we put it, put the code where? So, so yeah, Pixel, it can gather data from different sources. It can gather data from your Facebook page, from um, your Facebook workshops, but it can also gather data from your web page. Uh, and then it consolidates that data, and you can create virtual audiences. So when you pay for Facebook, it will uh, automatically reach out to similar people, so you don't need to guess keywords and things like that. And how do you activate it? How do you activate the pixel thing? So the pixel is activated through uh, Facebook Manager, and then you get code snippets for WordPress. You have a plugin which makes it easier um, for your different web pages, and then you add different points for different sub pages, uh, and you add the code where you want this. This or if you want it within Facebook. Sorry? Where do you add the code to? To the um, either as a Facebook WordPress plugin or to the HTML for the sites where you want to track this. I mean, we should use it. I think we should use it if we're using Facebook already. I mean, was that discussion basically with Michael? He was really opposed to it. And all that. Yeah, and I think that um, your uh, Katarina, yeah. I think you also was supposed to use on Facebook. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Right, question mark. I mean, I agree, it is, it's not the most ethical to track people, but Google also track people, so it's, it's, well, it doesn't make it better if we're already joining with Google does, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. and when it comes to Google AdWords, I wrote down some tips for not getting blocked out, because if you don't do it properly, then they will lock you out. And that's because a lot of NGO didn't really know how to have a proper AdWords strategy, so they use it in the wrong way. Um, so therefore, they are quite strict rules that you have to have relevant keywords and they have to be effective. So you have to actively manage that. Otherwise, 
they will block your uh, 10,000 uh, NGO accounts uh, yeah. for a while. So we shouldn't be too sloppy about it. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the most important ones for now. Inorganic social media. Is that let's see? It's paid. That, paid uh, social uh, media. Yeah. So mm, that would feed back from Pixel. So it would still we would still need to gather data if we're going to use it anyway. So it would be an, at the later points. All right. So I think we covered all of the most important ones for now. Uh, okay. So to summarize, to wrap up. Yeah. So use this link and create one wiki page for each part. Uh, podcast, guest, organic social media partnerships, SEO and Google AdWords, add it to the wiki page. If you have questions or need help with creating a wiki page, then send me a Slack message. Uh, Josh, do you have Slack? Oh, bless you. Thank you. Uh, I do not have Slack, but I can jump on it right now. You can send an email as well. Um, and for next time, right? When it comes to personal media, so we are an open source organization, but for example, when you deal with European data, and also California has a similar policy, which is almost identical to the GDPR, um, that you can't share data however you want to, uh, and you have to delete it when you don't need it anymore. That's sensitive personal data. So any type of data which can be used to identify a person. Uh, so for example, when it comes to Events, uh, not event management. When it comes to the uh, file that Joe we use for partners and that I use for instructors, uh, I make sure that it's not shared with everyone, uh, but only to the ones I invite. So it's only shared with the people within the organization. And then you should delete it when you no longer need it. Uh, and that's another point. Once we start with the Facebook pixel, we we should add a notifier on the web on the um, WordPress web page that we're collecting preferred party and preferred party cookies. Uh, so good to know. Everything else we're open about, but that's we're legally obliged to, to not be too open about. And then we can talk next week, same time if everyone are available. And that's it for now. OK. Sound good? All right. Great. Anyone wants to add anything? Any questions? Uh, I just have a question from Morrison. Was were you able to get or see the request for a wiki account from the new email? No, I still haven't. Uh, special pages. I go to go to that. Confirm account requests. Open requests too. Holy cow! I see it there. Oh man. Okay. So what happened was I was not getting the email. So let me approve it right now and see if you get it. Sorry. Oh, which that. one are you gonna approve? Jfong zero zero. Okay. 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 I got tricked. No, uh, I typically get emails. I did not get an email regarding your account creation for some reason. Hmm. Did it work? Yeah, I just, I just got the email, so I'm in. So I'm awesome. In. Right. And Josh, I sent the Slack invitation link in the chat. Um, and if anyone has something market related they won't cover next time, you can take it up either in the beginning of next meeting, or you can send it also throughout uh, the week, and I will add it uh, on the next meeting's agenda. It will be the same link for every meeting. So it's easy to see. Excellent. Right. Well, it sounds like the marketing is well on the way. Now we just need a product. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> we'll, see you we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.